There's no better way to create your drawings faster than by not having to actually draw everything. If you found my channel, you probably don't need for me to explain why having a block library is important. You probably have several dozen, if not hundreds, of blocks already. Whether you've created your blocks yourself, downloaded blocks from something like bimobject.com, or have purchased them from a block creator like me, the next step in the process is to make it easy to use for you and other users in your office to assemble it into a block library. Because it's such a critical part in creating AutoCAD drawings, it's probably not surprising to find out there have been many different evolutions and how you can use that block library. Perhaps the oldest way of dealing with a block library is to create a folder, which often has several subfolders with all of your different blocks. Using the old insert dialog, if you want to get that old school feel, type DD insert, you would visit that folder every time you want to insert one. Back in the day, that was pretty much the only way to do it. While this did work, the downsides were it took several clicks to make it happen, and it required that all your users be intimately familiar with your folder system and block naming conventions. The introduction of the tool palette simplified this process quite a bit. Instead of having to make multiple clicks to find the block we wanted, and having to know its name, we could simply click the picture. By adjusting the properties of the block in the palette, we can even make it do some fancy things. The downsides are, it takes a little bit of time to put together, especially if you're editing your properties to make them act the way you want to. Plus, the process of sharing this tool palette to others in your organization is rather esoteric, which means most people didn't know how to do it. Using the Design Center palette does make this process quite a bit faster, but it still requires some manual customization afterward. For more than a decade, this was absolutely the best method of managing your block library. Until now. The block palette was introduced sometime around AutoCAD 2018. It was okay, but still not quite a tool palette replacement. As new versions of AutoCAD were released, the block palette was refined, and as of AutoCAD 2021, it finally reached the level of development where the idea of using it to replace my coveted tool palettes seemed possible. For reasons I don't fully understand, AutoCAD still makes it a little bit difficult to get to the block palette. You're supposed to click this arrow under the insert command, but all the options aren't actually shown. I'm not sure why. For this reason, this is the one typed command that I recommend all users learn, even in my AutoCAD for Beginners class, which can be found in the link below. Simply type the letter I and press Enter to launch the block palette. From here, we just go to the Libraries tab and begin setting up our block libraries. How you set them up is up to you, but there are two methods that you should be aware of. If you're still using a folder with a bunch of individual drawings as your block library, then you can load an entire folder as your library. Loading a folder simply grabs the model space of every single file in that folder. It then creates a block preview for each file, and you're ready to go. Load as many folders as you have, and you can easily switch categories by clicking the drop down at the top. This works best for common details for any existing block library, or blocks that you would not have in a symbol legend. Lately, though, I've been consolidating my standard blocks into a single symbol legend drawing. The advantage to this is I've already got my symbol legend put together. It's also quite a bit easier to share or sell block libraries when they exist as a single file. When I need to add a block to my symbol library, I can open up the file, make the block, add it to my symbol legend, and I'm ready to go. The new block in symbol legend is immediately available to anybody on my team. When using this option, you do not pick a folder. Instead, you pick the individual file itself. It will load any blocks that are in your file into your library tab. I would make sure you don't have blocks you don't want in here. For instance, you may have used your basic template to start with, which probably has your title block embedded in it. So be sure to erase any unwanted blocks and purge the drawing so your library only has what you need. There are two key advantages to using the block palette instead of the tool palette. The first is, it only takes about 10 seconds to set up each library, and most of that is just waiting. The second is, any new files added to your library folder, or new blocks added to your library file, will automatically update in your block palette. No reloading or recreating required. You would have to manually add or remove these in a tool palette. 
Some disadvantages are it can take several seconds for the block palette to load these previews. This was a bigger problem in earlier versions, but when compared to tool palettes, which are pretty much instantaneous, it can be frustrating. Also, unlike a tool palette, you cannot add commands into a block palette. So if you have an existing tool palette library that includes commands, you may wish to stay with your tool palette. In either case, moving or renaming the files or folders will bork everything up, so don't do that. Did you find this useful? Then click the like button so I can score some sweet, sweet dopamine. Is there something you'd like for me to cover in a future video? Tell me in the comments. Clicking subscribe definitely means a lot. And if you're interested in any of my AutoCAD, Revit, Inventor, Civil 3D, MicroStation, 3DS, Max, Fusion 360, or SketchUp classes, find out more at AtkinsTechConsulting.com. As always, I'm David, and happy cat.